All right. All right, you bastards. Here are 16 essential tips for Divinity Original Sin 2. This game is a very complex one and you will be constantly learning new stuff throughout your adventure. I'm here to help you out with some tips that I wish I knew before I started. I did not, so I made a lot of mistakes early on. And now it's time to share the knowledge. So let's start. Whenever you get to a new location, there will be a statue that you can use to teleport around. That statue does not need to be used for you to be able to teleport to another place. So the fastest and best way to travel around the map is by using waypoint travel button near your minimap. It's something I've learned only during the last region and <laughs> felt like a knobhead when I have finally figured it out. So to use waypoint travel just click somewhere and then click back. That's it, and that's how you fast travel. Runes are one of the most important things in game to max out your character. I did a complete runes tutorial and I will link it in the video description so that you guys can check it out if you need further explanation on it, but here I will keep it short. Runes can be managed by right clicking a piece of item that you want to put runes in or remove them and pressing manage runes. Here you can remove runes whenever you want, they will not be used. So now what I want to do, again, put these same runes in, it's simple. Just drag them back in. You can do that as many times as you want. So use the runes, don't be afraid that you're going to consume them or something. Don't forget that when you open crafting panel by pressing the G on your keyboard, go to runes section. Here you can do the same thing, you can drag any type of gear and then do whatever you want. There's a cool feature also that you get later on where you can combine rune frames with runes. To do so open your crafting panel and you will see later that you can buy these of people. You have two types of rune frames, mystical and rune frame of power. If you combine this one for example with one rune, let's use giant thunder rune you will now get Mystical Giant Thunder Rune and next to the benefits that you usually get from these runes this will grant you also Dual Wielding plus one or Scoundrel plus one or Heritage plus one depending on what type of equipment you put the rune in. If we use with the same rune different frame we will get Giant Thunder Rune of Power and now we get different benefit from the rune. Bedrolls are the essential things in this game. You only need one and equip it in your quick bar slot. So whenever you take some damage and you need quick heals, just press the bedroll and you will heal up your party to maximum. Now there's also a cool thing about bedroll that I'm about to show you now. Let's damage someone so that you can see. Alright, now you can see the loss of health. Bam. And with it we also get rested bonus. You get bonus to strength, finesse and intelligence and also protection from muted, blind, crippled, knocked down. This is especially useful if you use rested before a fight. That way you can go into the battle with these bonuses. Next thing I'm going to cover are civil abilities. Civil abilities should be spread throughout your party members. Some of them needs to be maxed out, some of them do not need to be maxed out. Telekinesis and sneaking do not have to be maxed out. You can put a couple of points in and you'll be fine. Good thing about telekinesis is that you can move stuff around without getting damaged, which is definitely advantage over teleportation. When you get gloves of teleportation early on and you use the teleportation on a crate, that crate can get destroyed in the process. So that's why telekinesis is more useful, but also not necessary. Since you can teleport chests around and they will not break because they have much higher HP pool than normal crates. Sneaking reduces the line of sight that your enemies have on you. For example, when you hold down your shift button you can see the enemy's line of sight. It's indicated by the brighter version of red color. Everywhere else you can go into sneak mode and safely sneak pickpocket things if you want and stuff like that. If I do that with a character that has lower value, 
you can see that the line of sight gets greater. So it's much harder for me to approach someone without higher value in sneaking. I believe that two or three are max that you need. As for the rest, you can play with them as you want. For example, I would suggest getting persuasion to maximum on your main character. Sometimes you can decide with whom you want to start the conversation with, but sometimes it will happen that someone will run to you and then you're going to have to pass some persuasion check and you won't be able to initiate the conversation with the guy that has the highest persuasion. Bartering is essential to inflating prices of the things that you steal and get from adventuring and also it decreases cost of items in shops. Lucky Charm is fantastic. It go it's going to give you much better loot than you would usually get. And much more loot as well. Lore Master is essential because it identifies items that you pick up and they are usually around your level. So it's going to get maxed out eventually be simply because you're going to need to praise the higher level items. Thievery is one of the skills that is essential for making money. I did a complete guide on how to implement pickpocketing and I will link it in the description if you haven't checked that video out. It's really easy to use it and it's very very efficient. The more points you have into thievery, the more items you will steal from your target. There's a cool trick with civil abilities. Usually I spread them out throughout my party. As you can see, this guy is good at persuasion and bartering. Not that great at bartering, but hey. This girl is good at sneaking and thievery. I don't need sneaking that high, but I haven't checked it lately when I switched a lot of equipment and then I just got buffed from equipment. Usually I had it at 3, you can see base 3. Thievery, get it as much as you can. She is a lore master and I also used to get on the guy that has lore master a couple of points into telekinesis as well. Two points, more than enough for the whole game. And I have lucky charm bastard here as well. So I got all bases covered. Beautiful thing is that you don't have to have all the bases covered. When you get to Lady Vengeance and this mirror here where you can respect, thievery, bartering and lore master can be constantly put to zero and use them when you need. For example, use the respect mirror, ability section and civil abilities. So when you're playing the game and you're adventuring, you will get across a lot of items. Sometimes when you're in situations where there are no vendors, it's there's no town around it, there's no one to steal from, there's no one to barter with, then you put zero points into thievery and bartering. The same thing goes for lore master. Lore master can be put at zero constantly, and when you have something to appraise, you get back to your ship and then respect so that you have lore master at maximum and then appraise the item. And when you've appraised all the items that you got from adventuring, put it back to zero and put points into something you could use more. Bartering, same thing with lore master. You use bartering when you're in a city and you have a lot of stuff to sell. Thievery is same thing. If you want to go on a rampage and pickpocket everyone around you for some huge money, then you put points into thievery, do your thing, and then if you need those points that you put into Tivari for another ability, then you simply put the points there, where you want it. This is especially useful for solo or duo groups. Because you won't be able to get civil abilities to maximum. Pickpocketing is your main source of income. You go into sneak mode, stay in the darker red section, and then pickpocket a target that you did not pickpocket yet. You cannot pickpocket one target twice in the game. What you can do though is pickpocket it with someone else. So for example, I will now do this and pickpocket giant healing potion. Now I'm going to run away so that I don't get spotted. And now she's aware that she's been robbed but I want to run away as far as I can and that way when she conducts her search, a short one, she will not find anyone near to talk to, otherwise you would have to pass a persuasion check or simply 
nothing will happen if they do not find anything on you. So now if I want to pick pocket again, I cannot. But if I choose to another character, I can pick pocket, but thievery is required and I don't have enough thievery with this guy. So you can create a complete pickpocketing party. Go to the respect mirror, put all points into thievery for every party member and put one or two points into sneaking. Then go on a pickpocketing rampage in any city and you can pickpocket one vendor four times then. During the playthrough you will find a lot of barrels that are indicated with some kind of an element. Oil, water, poison, whatever. Barrels are an infinite resource that you can use in crafting process. If I want to create a poison potion that would heal my undead guy, then I'm going to need, amongst other options, ooze barrel and empty potion bottle. This will never be used completely, so you can have barrel throughout the whole playthrough and use it whenever you need in crafting process. Same goes for other barrels. If I want to create, for example, small flame rune, then I would have to use any oil source and oil barrel provides me with as many as I want. The problem is that they weigh a lot. On Lady Vengeance you can find barrels of every element. Just open your eyes and you will see ooze barrels, water barrels, oil barrels, whatever barrel you need. Cool thing about ooze barrel is that you can apply poison to any weapon that does not have elemental damage on it. And that way you'll get poisonous weapon. As you can see, poison damage was added. When you get to Lady Vengeance and do Lady of War quest after Fort Joy and Hollow Marshes area, you'll have an option to respect your character whenever you want. That goes for every other party member as well. Mirror where you can respect is located at the lowest deck in Lady Vengeance ship. And you can use this as many times as you want to test out builds, switch things if you don't like how they are, and many many other things. It has unlimited amount of uses, so go crazy. Teleportation skill is one of the most useful skills in the game. To learn teleportation you're going to need 2 points into error turge combat ability. That way you can learn it forever, or you can get early in the game gloves of teleportation. Or you can use both, that way you'll have two teleportations, one on each character for example. That's very useful because it's one of the most useful skills in the game. So how it works? It's simple. You can use teleportation to teleport characters or enemies close to you or away from you. They will also take damage in the process depending on your level and intelligence. Same thing can be applied to barrels or chests or crates or whatever item that you can pick up in the world. So if I want to use this barrel and teleport it next to me or anywhere else, I just need to have a clear line of sight of that spot. So as you can see, I cannot teleport it here because this blocks my view. This also means that you can use teleportation through metal grates that have visible line of sight towards the other side. So I want to teleport this bastard to me. Bam. That's how you can initiate fights and you can also teleport characters in battle. That way you can put those nasty marksmen and mages close to you so, you so that you can finish them off quickly with your main DPS character. If you done fucked it up, as Angry Joe would say, you can flee the battle anytime, as long as you have enough distance from the enemy. So I will now attack this guy to show you what I mean. Now you can see that I have an option flee combat. If you get into a fight where there's no chance you can win, flee with everyone and then get back later when you're leveled up. As it says, you need to be away from the enemy to be able to flee. So I'm still too close. Now I'm alright. 
teleported immediately to the nearest checkpoint. Cool thing that you can do is chain and unchain your party so that you move them individually and not like a group. So if I unchain Beast, now I can move him and the rest will not follow. This is especially useful when you're about to deal with some nasty traps and you don't want the other imbeciles to activate it. Now I cannot unchain because I'm too far away. But when I get the other guys near me, I can chain back up again. You can do that with every character. Undead are a special race. They cannot be healed. Whenever they receive healing, as you will see now, they will get damaged instead. You can see that my physical armor got damaged. Because restoration is resisted by physical armor, but I will explain that later. To heal the undead, you need to drink poison or heal through necromancy skill. So that's how you heal with undead, and every other tick will also heal you and not damage you. The best way that I found for the undead to heal during the combat, especially if, if you have a party composition like I do, one undead and three living, is to put some points into necromancy skill. Necromancy skill directly heals you for a percentage of damage dealt, depending on how high the necromancy skill is. That's the most efficient way Especially if your undead character is a high damage dealer. Another thing that undead have is the ability to lockpick everything with their bony fingers. So if I want to lockpick a chest, I don't need a lockpick for it. Lizard class has the ability to dig whenever you see a mound that has a hidden item beneath. So you don't need a shovel to dig. Otherwise, if you do not have a lizard in your party, then you're gonna have to have one shovel. Now for surfaces. As you might have already noticed in Divinity Original Sin, surfaces play a large role in every combat situation. I will show you a couple of combinations and what you should focus on. If I want to create a frozen surface, then I'm going to have to combine rain and some kind of a nice spell. I'm using now Winter Blast spell and if I use it here, nothing will happen this thing will just dissipate. But if I do this, call in rain, then there will be a water surface that can be electrified or frozen. So if I use winter blast now, everything will freeze and there's a chance for any character, friendly or enemy, to get knocked down by walking over it. My guys were extremely lucky now. Otherwise they fall constantly in the battle. To counter sleeping and getting knocked down on ice, combine any boots that you have with nails. And when you combine, you'll get immunity to sleeping effect, as you can see in the tooltip of my boots. The most important thing about surfaces is that you scroll over them to see what they do and what can be done with them. If I use any kind of electrifying spell on the water, everything will be electrified here. And every character, be it friend or an enemy, that does not have magic armor will get stunned. When they are stunned, they lose their turn. There are plenty of other combinations. Let's use, for example, fire arrow. Now we have fire. If we want to douse the fire, Then just call in rain and it will extinguish the fire. And now we have steam cloud effect over here that removes burning effect. Cool thing about all of these things that are kind of globally used like rain where it falls all over everyone, same as blood, it gives some kind of a status effect on your characters. So be mindful of that also. If we use rain then we get wet status effect. So I can now use Shocking Arrow and shock everyone that is wet. Shocking is not same as Stunning. Shocking is also resisted by Magic Armor and if an enemy does not have a Magic Armor, they will be shocked. 
and shocking debuffs them. Now let's cover the advanced, newly implemented Necrofire, Cursed Poison Clouds and stuff like that. In the first region of the game you'll get a spell called Bless. There's a mod that I will link in the description that removes source point requirement for this spell. It's very useful because spell is extremely extremely useful, especially to get rid of these advanced surfaces. So if I throw this grenade, I will create Necrofire. To extinguish Necrofire, you need to cast Bless on it first. That way you get normal fire and then you can extinguish normal fire by putting water over it. Bless can be applied in another way as well. You can bless surfaces that are normal and then create special effects like blessed water that will apply healing to your party members. So there are numerous combinations you can play with. I could make a whole new video about this completely to cover all the surfaces but it's pain in the ass and I hope you guys understood how to deal with it. There will also be cursed blood surfaces to remove cursed blood. Just use bless on it that will remove curse and then you have normal blood. Some of the skills like battle stomp remove the surface completely. Clears non cursed surfaces and clouds. Here is water. Now there's no more water. Everything clear. There's also one more skill in Eraturge called Tornado. That Tornado removes all the surfaces. If you're not new to my channel then you know I already did a lot of builds for this game and I plan on doing a lot more. But the thing is my builds are mainly showcased when I'm at higher levels. So many people ask me how to actually build these things when you're at lower levels. When you're at Fort Joy and Hollow Marshes area, do not bother too much with it. You'll get to Lady of War, that is Lady Vengeance, the ship there you'll be able to respec. The only thing that you need to know is the overall picture on how to build the character and that's what my builds are showcasing. So for example, if the, I was this guy, currently I'm playing mix of Polymorph and Warfare, with Strength being my main attribute. So what would I do? At the beginning of the game, obviously, I would put more points into Strength and some points into Wits. Wits increases your critical chance and your initiative. Initiative is really important in combat. If you had that first turn, you can do nasty things to your enemies without them being able to act. Or if you want, you can go directly for critical build and put more points in, beginning, in the beginning to Wits and less into your main damage dealing attribute. As for combat abilities, don't lose mind too much about how to build this in the first area of the game. When you get to Lady Vengeance, you'll, ab you'll be able to respect whenever you want and you'll be able to test out whatever you like. As for the first area, either specialize in one thing or redistribute points into two things. It's up to you, really. Or you can specialize in one thing and put only one point into another thing so that you can learn skills from another ability. Weapon skills have no skills of their own. They are just here to buff your damage with that weapon and also you'll get a second bonus as well. With single-handed you get accuracy, with two-handed you get pre-critical multiplier, with ranged you get more critical chance, with all within you get more dodging. From the defense tree, if you're playing in a group, the only thing that you need is leadership. Put that on your tank, on your tankiest character. That way others around him will have the benefit of more dodging and more resistances simply because your tank does not need any more tankiness. He's tanky as it is. Perseverance and Retribution are useful if you're playing with Lone Wolf in solo or duo groups. But in four man group they are not useful. I hope I cleared a bit how to build stuff from the beginning now. If you have more questions about it, post in comments. You'll eventually get to respect mirror and then you're sorted out forever. Test whatever you like, follow my builds and you'll be alright. One more thing, when you're at the max level and you already have a stat maximized, there's a cool thing that you can do and this is it. Maximum amount of number you can have in attribute and in 
this combat abilities is 40 for attributes and 10 for combat abilities. But when you're in this screen, gear also accounts in that number. If you want to go over the number 10 or over the number 40, then you need to do this. Move skill points from another tree so that you have more available attribute points. Same you can do with combat ability so that you have some available points left. And then exit this respec screen. Go into your character screen and look at it. Now, now you can go above. Now you can go above number 10 with gear bonuses. Or you can go above number 40 with gear bonuses. Your base cannot go above 40. But with gear it can go as much as you can get from the gear. Every enemy that you encounter in the game has magical and physical armor. Physical armor blocks physical damage so that it does not affect your health pool. For example, I will now strike her or miss her. And now I've dealt physical damage to her because my character deals only physical damage. Plus some elemental damage from the weapon, but that's not relevant here. When physical and magical armor gets removed, then you damage their health pool. So I will remove now her physical armor completely and then when I strike her next time I'll directly of deal blow to her HP. Same thing applies if you're using magical skills and also magical arrows. If I want to do freezing damage now everyone will get magical armor removed. To conclude, if you're using any type of elemental damage, then you're going to reduce enemy's magical armor. If you use any kind of physical damage, you will reduce enemy's physical armor. You can build your group to focus on one or to split two to do physical damage and two to do magical damage. Up to you what you want. Both of these work I've played throughout most of the game on tactician difficulty and I've been focusing on physical damage for the most part of it and it did perfectly fine. Also don't forget to check the tooltip what kind of resistance some of these skills have. If I want to knock down an enemy with battle stomp it says it is resisted by physical armor. So to knock down an enemy I'm going to have to remove their physical armor. And then when I would use Battle Storm, they would get knocked down. This is just a friendly character, so I cannot knock her down. Same thing applies for things that use magical armor as a resistance. For example, this skill is resisted by magical armor. So if I use that on a person that's got magical armor, it's going to get blocked. Game is perfectly playable in solo or duo groups. The only thing that you need to be effective is lone wolf talent. This increases a lot of things and basically makes you a one-man army or two-man army. It only works with one or two party members. On the Lady Vengeance after the first region you'll have this kid with you. His name is Han and you can send them to fetch an item that you want for you. He just fetched pixie dust. So you can now tell him that you need something and here is a list of items that he can fetch. I want him to fetch for me another pixie dust so I click here and then don't forget to scroll up. You need to scroll back up otherwise you won't see this option. And now he's off to get me another item. I think this is reset hourly, so every hour you can do this. That would be it for this video, I hope I helped you out, lads, don't forget to check out the description please for answers to meaning of life and secrets of the universe. I hope you're gonna have much easier time now with the game. It's one of the best games and best RPGs of all time. And that's a high praise coming from me, believe me. Enjoy it, embrace it. 
put some time into it if you have and continue watching the channel for some more news on this beautiful game. Toodaloo, motherfucker! Hey.